In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Dear friends in Christ, on this second Sunday of Advent, our attraction is our attention is turned to the great figure of John the Baptist. John calls us out of the desert, proclaiming a time of repentance and renewal for the day of the Lord is at hand. As we light two candles on the Advent wreath, let us prepare ourselves through prayer and penance. Let us open a way for the Lord to come into our lives. All, may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Amen. We gather to thank and praise our God as we anticipate the great feast of the birth of Christ. To prepare, we remember our sin and trust in God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have made great sin in my thoughts and in my words. our sin and bring us everlasting light. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and of, and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide. But he shall judge the poor with justice, and decide a right for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with his and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together, with the little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors, together the, their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay with the ox. The baby shall play with the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the adler's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin at all by my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, as water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse set up as a signal for the nations the gentiles shall seek out for his dwelling shall be glorious <coughs> the word of the lord Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. 
O oh God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flower in his days in profound peace, till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. May his name be blessed forever. As long as the sun, his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. All the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Our second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written previously was written for our instruction, that by endurance and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another, in keeping with Christ Jesus, that with one accord you may be with one voice. Glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, then, as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a minister of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, to confirm the promises to the patriarchs, but so that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Abraham from these stones. 
Even now the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance. The one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear, clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. The chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. We remember Jesus preached to an agricultural, uh, agricultural community and culture, and so when he, when uh, and when John would preach also and talk about his winnowing fan is in, in his is in his hand, and he would clear his threshing floor and gather the wheat into the barn. Uh, that made perfect sense to to him, and I listened to that for years and just went in one ear and out the other and was clueless of what, was, what, what does that mean? And for those of you who perhaps are not farmers, here's uh, what basically means they had like a big, big fan and what they would do is they would bring uh, the wheat and it would be with, with, with uh, and it would be ground to, to separate the wheat from the chaff. The wheat they wanted to keep, the chaff they wanted to toss out. And so the only way they could do, separate it in those days, I'm sure they have modern ways of doing it today, is they would grind it and then it would be like on a big stone and then they take the fan like this, like you take anything and shake it. And then the chaff was lighter and it flew out. And what remained was what was, what was kept, the wheat. And so they used, the, John the Baptist used that image. Jesus used similar agricultural image in a lot of his parables to try to get their attention, to get them, give them a glimpse of how is this going to be on the last judgment day when, when Jesus comes, God comes again, uh, and there's a separation from the good and, and, and the not so good. Now, we also know, and, and, that, and that was to get their attention, but unfortunately not, not only got some of their attention, it frightened some of them. <coughs> Even till this day, Many Catholics are expecting to be not the wheat, but the chaff. And many Catholics come to church and leave, and they don't feel saved at all. They feel condemned. And many Catholics are expecting not salvation, but damnation. So the good news for us as we journey through Advent is the Lord is trying to get our attention to realize and to remind us, as he has said other places, Clearly, he's refined the preaching of John the Baptist. I have not come to condemn, but I've come to save. And this story is given to us to wake us up and to change what we need to change. And probably for most of us, it's not a major overhaul. It's a fine tuning. You're holier than you judge yourselves. Of course, as Paul preaches, we're all sinners, we all fall short, we all need mercy, we all need forgiveness and redemption. But, okay, the truth is also, you know, we're more than our sin. That's not our whole story. And on the last day, when we stand before the judge, that judge, isn't it nice to know if we ever went to court, even for a parking ticket, wouldn't it be nice to know the judge loves us. He's not out to get us. He's there to share mercy. And we have no fear. And that's why in, in, during Advent, we look forward. It's a joyful season with the Lord because who is being born? Our Savior, who came not to condemn, but to forgive, to save. And then what we ought to do is imitate this God we believe in and hope for. So that 
in all who have hurt us in any way, in all who disappoint us and upset us, even in those who scandalize us. We treat them as we want God to treat us, with understanding, <coughs> compassion, and mercy. As Teresa of Calcutta teaches, scandal, and those who are scandalized, is for the weak of faith. We have faith in Jesus. We may take on war, but we will never sink because we await the birth of Christ and his mission is salvation, redemption, and mercy. And that's why when we leave church, we should always feel joyful and have a smile in our heart and on her face. <clears throat>
Bless you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, work of human hands. Let it be our spirit, let it become our spiritual food. Bless you, God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands. Let it become our spiritual drink. And please stand now and pray that our sacrifice be accepted by God, our Almighty Father. Be pleased, loving God, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merit to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue and with protection, with your mercy. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to begin our day in Advent in thanks and in Jesus. He assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed, opening for us the way to salvation. And when he comes again in glory, and all is at last revealed, we who watch for that day may inherit his great promise, in which now we dare to hope. And so we join Mary, her husband Joseph, all the saints and angels, as we pray, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of us. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O oh God. We love the human race who always walk with us on the journey. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures, he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread from the table, blessed and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through the passion and death, on, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right, we proclaim the work of your love till he returns. We offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice that Christ has handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now 
until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have holy communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Holy Father, our bishops Gerald and Alberto, and the entire people your Son has made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our sisters and brothers. Inspire us in words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is over, that we too may come to that eternal dwelling place to live with them and you forever in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, all the apostles and saints, that we shall then praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son, through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray now as Jesus Christ, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray now as Jesus Christ, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, by the help of your mercy, we may be freed from sin, safe from distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. Look not on our sin, but on our faith. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And please share his peace with one another. Lamb of God, you take the place of the Lord's arms, at first chance. Lamb of God, you take the place of the Lord's arms, at first chance. Lamb of God, you take the place of the Lord's arms, at first chance. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away our sin. How happy we are to receive him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof.
Please stand now to pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through your holy sacrament and your holy word, our partaking in these mysteries, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth, to hold fast to your promise of salvation and mercy. Through Christ our Lord, amen. 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 The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.